Hey guys, Wave618 here. It is the 9th of March 2020. So, in today's video, we've got a lot to discuss. It's been a while since my last public YouTube video, and so as a result, I'm going to fill you in on a lot of information. So, first up, we're going to talk about Bitcoin. As you can see before you, I think the last video that I did on YouTube, we were talking about this big triangle playing out. Now, the blue lines that you can see before you on the chart are basically demarcating that triangle but I want to tell you how I've been focusing on two other counts uh, very very closely and I'm, that's what I'm going to fill you in on within this video all right on top of that obviously a major topic of discussion at this moment is what is going on in the stock markets just quickly bringing that up if we take a look at the Dow Jones so here's your Dow just cleaning the chart up a little bit we can quickly see one of the key things to talk about is the fact that we're currently at the 200 week moving average, a very, very important indicator throughout history to determine whether the long term trend is being held or not. So we're at a very, very pivotal point in the stock markets. And that is another very important point or we're going to really address the stock markets in today's video. Also, obviously, we've seen a big sell off in oil. I'm going to upload a separate video on that. It's actually an old video where I had forecast these massive falls in price. And it will basically explain how we may be seeing a little bit of a bounce potentially in oil at this moment. All right. So if interested, then stay tuned. Alright guys, so first up, let's pull up Bitcoin. It's the first chart we're going to discuss. And uh, yeah, I just want to start by saying, um, yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while since my last video, almost two months. And basically, it's the old excuse, just been incredibly busy. Yeah, I'm not going to go into all the details. But yeah, I've just, uh, there's too much to go on about, to be honest, to explain what I've been doing recently. But yeah, I've obviously been doing my regular updates for my group. Uh, I have an obligation to do so. And um, yeah, if you need those regular updates, that's where you can find my my updates. Um, yeah, before we go on into the chart, I will say because it's been a while, you know, every so often I'll do a discount. I'm going to throw out a 61.8% discount on the educational course. OK, so that's my full edu educational course covering everything I've learned in trading jargon free put into 20 hours of video content over 30 modules and i'll put a link to that in the description with the discount code so if interested you can check that out there all right but with that said we can now focus on bitcoin now i did say how i was looking at a few different counts as well as this triangle yeah so ultimately just going on from the last video where i talked about this being a major wave three top and we were then seeing all of this subsequent price action, which I was calling a major wave four. And you can see if we pull on volume, we've seen this tailing off volume here, which fits in with a with a triangle. Yeah, so certainly haven't written off the triangle play out and it is actually um, playing out quite nicely, to be honest. But I did have a few thoughts and you know that with my cryptology group, I look at the top 15 market caps and just by looking at the other market, other markets, the other top 15 market caps. I just found that this triangle wasn't really making sense. It would be difficult to justify uh, this, a similar play out on the other charts. So I was looking at this WXY play out also. So just to explain that, we can quickly look at Ethereum. So let's just pull up Ethereum and we just take off all the annotations. So here you can see your major impulse up and then we've got a three wave move down. Yeah, very obvious. And then I had this subsequent move up looking very corrective. So this to me was a three wave move up. That was also corrective. And then I was looking for a final three to finish off this correction of this three wave move down. And as a result, you then get three waves down further 
maybe coming to around $45 with this little bit of a consolidation holding price up. That is what I was thinking would probably be the most likely scenario in Ethereum. And so for that reason, I was looking at a similar play out with this WXY in Bitcoin. Another chart I want to show you is the total market cap uh, excluding Bitcoin. So basically your altcoin uh, chart. So here it looks very similar to Ethereum basically. So you got your big impulse going up and then I mean this pullback here it looks too short to say it's the end and that's why again I'm thinking we do see us come down maybe a bit of a bounce a little bit higher and then we come down to even lower. Okay just bringing on a few pitchforks to look at the total market cap here. We actually followed a very nice pitchfork here, really respecting the line. So it was a shift pitchfork, first pivot, second pivot, third pivot. And then we broke to the upside. Yeah, that basically tells you that the three wave move down that formed prior to the breakout of this upper warning line was a completion. So that's your three wave completion telling you it's looking corrective. And then the subsequent move up that to me was looking like an ABC, so an A, a B and a C uh, up to here. Then this was looking like it's correcting that move up. And so I was expecting another move up to take out these highs. And coming up to around here approximately. Yeah. If we zoom in and take a look at these pitchforks, basically what I was looking at is this is your, your ABC up. This is your correction. I was looking for another corrective move up. So that would be your A, that would be your B. And that would be your C. Now, this is still my probably my preferred count at this moment in time. If we zoom in, we can take a better look at these pitchforks. So this one was holding price quite nicely here on Ethereum. So we had this initial impulse, went sideways, wave two, wave three up to here. Here's your wave four, and then we got off wave five. Yeah. So this is what I was calling wave A. Then we're going into wave B, which I was looking at as a WXY. The way it's looking now is we've got a uh, initial A, B, C down to make W and then from there we get our X wave and then I'm expecting a three wave move down to make the Y. Probably this is our initial move. Uh, then we see a bounce before probably coming down to this horizontal level which was significant support in the past. If we zoom out we can see the significance of that level being the top of this consolidation here offering support, support, support there. So a very, very key level, and I wouldn't be surprised for us to test that level once more. Okay, so this is on your, your total market cap, which is very, very similar to the Ethereum chart. If we just take a look at Ethereum again. So Ethereum had, I was thinking that this initial five wave impulse might only correct to this point. This was my initial target. 192 was the target. We've hit that level, but looking at it, it looks like it wants to make another leg down. So... Yeah, looking at the, the smaller Elliott wave count, I've got this as a first three waves down to make your W, then three waves up to make your X, and then the Y wave I'm looking at, that is your first wave down, we're waiting for a bounce, and then another move down, probably to around $164 here on Ethereum. That is what I'm looking out for at this moment in time. Now, with that said, we can now explain what I'm looking out for here on Bitcoin. So I've not written off the triangle. It could still play out as a big A, B, C, D, E, and go up from here. But I'm not, as I say, it doesn't seem to fit in with the rest of the top 15 market caps. And as a result, I've been looking at this WXY. Now there's two ways the WXY can play out. So this is one way, so you've got your W, that is in here, that's your 20K to 3K. And then what I'm looking at is for the X wave, potentially coming up to 16K, all right? And then seeing a sell off down to 2.2K, taking out 3K. So you've got your W, your X and your Y. The sub wave count of that, so quite clearly you can see the three waves coming down for the W. So you've got your first three waves down, then you've got your descending triangle here, and then your next three waves down yeah, so that's your first correction for your W. And then I had this as an A, B, C, where the B wave is an ascending triangle. And it's a very extended C wave. So the C wave is a 4.236 extension of uh, wave A, which obviously made people think that looked very, very impulsive. But 
if you look across the top 50 market caps, you can see that it looks a lot more corrective. And so I'm, I'm leaning towards it still being corrective. Um, so yeah, that's your ABC uh, to make an initial W of your major X. And then you've got your X of X, which in itself is a W, X, Y, X, Z. So that was your W, X, Y, X, Z. And then you've got your ABC going up. So we've had a five wave impulse up to here. That's your A making our B and then the C comes up to 16K. So that's the sub wave count basically. All right. At the moment, it is getting close to invalidation. Obviously, if we come beneath 6.3K, this count gets invalidated. And if that's the case, I'd be looking towards a WXY, but I would be changing the X wave position to here. Yeah. So I'd be saying the X wave is finished. So you W, X, and we go into Y, which would probably still have a similar target around 2K. Um, but it basically means that we're just going to keep heading down here uh, and basically means we're going to take out 6.4K before we take out 13K. All right. But at the moment, I'm still thinking most probable scenario is that we do push up to 16K, but we're coming close to invalidation. I'll zoom in on the important price levels to look out for for that to help distinguish which count is most likely to play out. But at the moment, I think most probable is that we could still move up here to 16k all right um so next thing to mention so we'll put that back there for now uh why 16k all right first of all you can see these black order blocks here how have they been drawn so let me explain that and i'll show you the significance of them so first of all with order blocks i like to draw them on the highest time frame so here is the monthly time frame on bitcoin and basically during this downward move 20k to 3k we get a few green candles yeah so generally you've got red candles coming down it's a downward trend every so often you'll get a little bit of a consolidation building up which will present itself as a green candle and on the high time frames you get your open and close on the monthly chart so that's basically how i've drawn them excluding this order block these three order blocks this one this one and this one were drawn on the monthly time frame this is on the weekly. I'll show you how I drew that in a moment. But basically on the monthly time frame, you've got this order block. It's basically the open and close of that monthly candle. We then use the open and close of this monthly candle. And then we then use the open and close of that monthly candle. Okay, so that explains those three order blocks. Let's just now talk about this order block, which you can then see if you zoom in on the weekly time frame. And you can see here again you've got your red candles and this big green candle sticking out here so again open and close is used to draw out that um, order block now why are those open and closes on the high time frames very important around those order blocks and the reason is they act as very significant support and resistance going forward so they these are all drawn from here through to uh here okay and since then you'll see going forward these levels act as wonderful support and resistance okay so how far did we come up so we came up and hit the uh, bottom of this weekly order block right here we then came down testing the top of this order block okay and then eventually we come down testing the top of this order block then the bottom of this order block then we come all the way up testing the top of this order block and then yeah we're just going between the levels basically they're acting as wonderful support and resistance and basically the next move up i'm anticipating us because we've already tested the bottom of this order block i'm anticipating us testing 16k which is the top of that order block okay that's one reason for 16k okay the next reason is just using fibs basically so if we do a fib retracement let's just put that on from top to bottom 20k to 3k and i want to look on the linear time frame because that's best for fib retracements and you can basically see so far we hit the 0.618 right here when we came up to 13k and the 0.786 is right at 16k so another reason and you all know 0.786 is a very common fib retracement level to get hit all right so that's that one uh, and then from a fib extension point of view so if we're looking at this major x wave here being made up of a wxy where that's w that's x and that's y yeah, if we do fib extension of let's take off magnet mode extension of w extend it from x uh, and this should be on the log scale 
So yeah, you get your 0.618 extension perfectly hit here at 16K. Okay, so you've got your fib extension perfectly hit, you've got your fib retracement perfectly hit, and you've got your order block perfectly hit. So that's the reason for 16K. If we do play out along the lines of this major W, X, Y play out, um, then yeah, it looks like 16K will offer very heavy resistance. Okay, actually would be a wonderful shorting opportunity at that point. That's the way I'm looking at it. Now, with that said, obviously we need to make sure that this price holds on here uh, because obviously if we go below 6.4K, then we invalidate that altogether. Yeah, so this major WXY gets invalidated if we go below 6.4K. But we can perhaps have a little bit of uncertainty about this major WXY even if price comes beneath this level here. So if we zoom in, let's go on the daily. You can see there's good consolidation here that you would expect to hold price up with price coming down, yeah? And um, yeah, if it fails to hold 6,900, I'd be getting very, very concerned that this is about to break at 6,400, okay? Would I go long at this point or would I wait for it to come down here? Well, I don't like catching the bottoms. I don't like catching knives, basically. So that's not the way I play. I use horizontal levels to really time the trades. Um, I'm still anticipating another move down. I'm certainly going to let that play out. And the other thing that I'm a little bit cautious about on Bitcoin is the 50 week simple moving average. Let's just pull up the simple moving average. Let's take off everything else a moment. Let's just take off all the other moving averages. Yeah, the 50 week has been very, very important in the past. And right now, sorry, we need to go on the weekly time frame. So here's your 50 week. You can see price stayed above it throughout the trend here. It came beneath it and then trended down for a bit. Managed to get above, initially holding it as support. And now we're back beneath it again. Okay, so it's showing weakness once more. I find it very difficult to go long on Bitcoin once it's beneath the 50 week moving average. So actually, I'm very concerned about Bitcoin whilst it's beneath the 50 week simple moving average. I'm still thinking we can get back above. Yeah, I'm still thinking that major WXY with the X wave coming up to 16K is possible, but I would not be jumping in on this trade whilst we're beneath the 50 week simple moving average because looking at this, you know, it's suggesting we saw a bit of weakness here. You know, we didn't really bounce perfectly off the 50 week simple moving average. We came and hovered beneath it a couple of times and now we could actually stay beneath it. And you might find that we get a retest of the 50 week simple moving average and actually continue trending down. Certainly, certainly possible. And uh, that would be in keeping with that other WXY count that I mentioned. And that is where we shift the X wave to here. Where we say that's W, that was your correction for your X wave where it's an ABC. And then this is all a Y wave where this could be your first leg of your Y, second leg and third leg coming down. Okay, certainly possible. Um, and the longer we stay beneath the 50 week simple moving average, the more likely that is going to occur. Okay, now the key levels that I'm looking at are really using these order blocks. So at the moment, we're, we're currently at a very key order block. But looking at the Elliott wave down, it looks like it needs to make another leg down. And I would want to see 6,900 hold. If 6,900 fails to hold, then uh, yeah, I'd be very concerned. And in fact, I might even con consider looking at shorts. I'd probably wait for 6,300 to get overcome before looking for shorts. But um, yeah, depending if I'm I'm seeing a good setup at 6,900, I potentially could look for shorts if price goes beneath that level. But until it does, uh, there's every chance that this keeps going up and as I say, could still head on to 16K, which would be in keeping with the halving that is scheduled for middle of May uh, in Bitcoin. Okay, so those are the three counts I'm looking out for. So we've got the triangle, which as I say, doesn't seem to fit in with the rest of the altcoins. Uh, so as a result, I'm leaning towards a WXY play out at present and I'm still in favor of the WXY whereby the X wave comes up to 16K, but we're at a pivotal level that it needs to hold uh, at around 6,900. If that fails to hold, I'll be getting very concerned and I'll be looking for shorts. That pretty much summarizes what I'm looking out, out for in Bitcoin. 
Um, and in terms of looking for longs, I would want to see um, certainly us holding on to 6900 and I'd wait for us to get back above 7700. That's the top of this order block here, this black line. That is what I'd be looking out for in order for looking for longs. Um, Okie doke, that's pretty much it on Bitcoin. So, <clears throat> and the next up, we're going to talk about the stock market. All right, so I did mention the stock market is very important to look at and also the oil charts. First of all, let's pull up the Dow. Um, okay, quite a bit to talk about on the Dow also. Let's go on the monthly to begin with. Um, all right, first of all, there's a few reasons why we've seen a sell off. Um, so, I say reasons. There's a few fundamental news reports that are the saying are associated with the sell-off. Now, I don't feel that um, they are necessarily correlated, but uh, they can certainly instill fear. And um, yeah, so obviously coronavirus being one, the other one being oil prices um, really getting hammered. Uh, but oil prices, I'm gonna review in a separate video and demonstrate how we've hit very key levels, uh, the, the bearish levels that I've been looking out for. Following on from a video I uploaded to my group in November 2019. Um, so yeah, I'll up for, upload that video shortly. So I won't talk about oil in this video. Um, but uh, yeah, let's focus on the Dow now and we'll look at the, the NASDAQ and the S&P also. But um, yeah, long-term count following post-depression here, post depression, or well, the Great Depression, it lost 90% in value. So, yeah, that's just an idea of how much stock markets can potentially crash. Yeah, 90% it lost. All right. Then, obviously, we've got our macroscopic count from here onwards. And I have it as a one, two, uh, wave three up until your stagflationary period lasting approximately 30 years uh, from 1962 through to 1982, I think it was. Uh, I got that as your wave four one two three four and then everything since has been this really parabolic wave five and uh, let's just take off this moving average for the moment um yeah and of this wave five i've been looking at at it as a uh, a one a two a three a wave four made up of your 2000 and 2000 recession followed by your 2008 recession and then we've gone into our wave five from there and it's that elliott wave count that we would need to focus on in this video um but yeah, basically, yeah, we had our five wave count. Now, just looking at it on the linear scale, yeah, this is your bubble that we're seeing here. Now, as prices go higher, yeah, you're going to see greater pullbacks. It doesn't mean it's the end of the world. It just means uh, because price has gone almost vertical, every pullback is going to be dramatic. And that's going to keep increasing in volatility as time goes on. Yeah, because the higher things are, the more overstretched price is. And the more fear there will be when price starts falling, okay? Uh, especially when things are bought on debt rather than actual um, ownership of that asset, that money. So, yeah, there'll be a lot more fear and a lot more selling, okay? Doesn't mean it's suddenly going to be a massive depression. Um, so, let's try and make sense of this now. Let's zoom in on the shorter time frame uh, count. So, back on our log scale. It's this bit of price action that we need to focus on. Now, I'm struggling to see a five wave count that's terminated here. The sub wave count that I've been looking at was this being a wave one, running flat wave two. And then I, would, I was initially looking at this as your wave three, four, and then going into a fifth where this was a one, two, three, four, and then looking for a fifth coming up higher. That has clearly been invalidated. That's not happening, okay? you. I can't see this being a five a five wave move anymore. Okay, so the other way of looking at it is this is your wave one running flat wave two wave three actually comes up to here. Okay, this has been a running flat wave four, and if this is the case, we're then going into our wave five, which is just going to go absolutely crazy to the upside. Okay, is it going to play out like this? Well, we're going to find out very very soon, and I'm talking about next couple of weeks. Uh, if it if it is going to play out like this, it needs to do so now, yeah, because we are holding on to some very key trend parameters right now, such as the 200-week moving average, which I'll pull on in a moment. But yeah, it needs to happen right away, uh, because any further selling off and this this Elliott wave count, which is probably the most 
uh, ambitious count to hold on to this upward move is going to get invalidated soon if it falls comes down any further okay so i do think potentially you've got your wave one running flat wave two if uh, wave three finishing here we're going to running flat wave four and then we go into our fifth okay um now let's just zoom in on this potential running flat wave four so running flat is uh, an abc count so three three five count so that's your three waves down then you've got your three waves up very clear so your first wave running flat second wave and then uh your three wave final wave up there and then you get your five wave impulse coming down which is obviously going to scare everyone off because it's five wave-ish and it's impulsive uh but it don't forget the these five wave impulses can often be c waves of an abc flat whether it's a running flat regular flat expanded flat um, from a fib extension point of view if this let's just label it let's just put the a b c uh, and then do our fib extension tool so if that's our a that's our b so first of all the b is a 1.382 extension of a yeah which is a very nice setup uh, and then the C is a, a perfect one-to-one -one relationship. So from an Elliott wave point of view, that, you've got perfect fibs lining up right here. Also, this C wave down does seem to have already completed a five wave count. So you've got your wave one, two, three, four, and five. Certainly looking like it's terminated, but it needs to hold on to these lows. Otherwise, I see it just tumbling down and down and down. Okay, so this is kind of the last shout for a, the stock market holding on to this upward trend. Um, <clears throat> so I don't think, I, we can't say we're heading into, well, yeah, I can't say we're heading into recession just yet, but we should be about to find out. But one thing's for sure, I struggle to see this as an ending impulse right here. And I don't see any ending diagonal either. For me, this is a three wave count up to here. And when you see a three wave move up, um, I'm thinking a correction. Yeah. So I'm then looking for a bigger correction. So this would be the start three waves down, three waves up, and then you get your five wave impulse looking like the completion of a larger running flat ABC. Okay. So a couple of other things to look at. So we'll, as I said, we'll look at the NASDAQ and the S&P also. So NASDAQ, they're all giving the same counts, by the way. Um, so here, NASDAQ, that was wave one, running flat, wave two, uh, three up to here. And this is your wave four, A, B, and C. And you can see the pitchfork still holding on to price here, lower median line just about holding on to the price, um, potentially then going into our fifth wave. S&P, similar play out. So again, here's your pitchfork. Uh, I've used different pivots here, just bear with me. Let's just try should be there so that's how the pitchfork should be so that's your wave one running flat wave two three up to here that's your running flat wave four then we're going to our fifth and you can see the lower warning line just about holding on to it now let me talk about the things that scare me about the stock market right now so one is the yield curve and the other one is the dax so dax is the index for the, uh, the german stock exchange basically and I had been closely monitoring this pitchfork holding price uh, during this upward move. Now, this is basically going on from our uh, stagflationary period in the 70s. And um, yeah, so this was holding on to this subsequent impulsive price action. And this pitchfork was holding price really, really nice. You can see we swung all the way from upper warning line to lower warning line. A little bit of an overshoot down below it here. And again, we're seeing it overshot. OK, I certainly don't want to see us come down any further here in the DAX. Otherwise, again, it's suggesting a lot of weakness. OK, so that's one real concerning thing about the stocks in general. We're seeing weakness here in the DAX and it really has got to hold on to these levels. OK, yes, it did come beneath the lower warning line on a few occasions here and then bounce straight back up. That's what we need to see again happening in the next couple of weeks here in the DAX. And as I say, the other concern that I had was looking at the yield curves. Let's quickly bring them up. So that's basically looking at your bond markets. Um, just bear with me. Okay, so this chart, 
So this is your two-year yields divided by your 10-year yields, all right, uh, on the log scale. I spoke about this video in the past, talking about the yield curve inversion, perhaps anticipating uh, a sell-off in the stock markets. And basically what I was saying, it was around this point here, I think, and I was saying we might not actually get a yield curve inversion. Now, basically what this chart is showing you is the two-year yields divided by the 10-year yields, okay? And generally, you should always be getting better yields on the longer duration bond, that's the 10-year bond. So usually the 10-year yield is always greater than the two. And as a result, when you divide the two-year yield by the 10-year yield, you should be getting a value less than one, okay? Because the, the yields on the 10-year, uh, the yield on the 10-year should be greater than the two. All right, so this red line shows you everything below one, Okay, this is what you expect, yeah? And when it goes above, it's basically telling you that the two-year yields are greater than the 10-year yields, and that shouldn't happen, and it's a sign that things are going wrong, and we're gonna see a massive sell-off in the markets, okay? And you can see, basically, we've got the, we have this downward trend. This is spanning from uh, 1980, and every time it came above, you can see we get rejected here at this yield curve inversion point. That's once, twice, three times and now this is the fourth time okay so another reason why we could actually see this come all the way down suggesting uh you know big sell-off in the stock markets okay so yeah we've got this blue trend line connecting the highs here and you can see again we've we had our yield curve inversion i thought we might fall short of it and just roll over bef beforehand but we did actually manage to just hit the line and we start you can see now as a result dramatic sell-off okay or dramatic reduction in this um, yield relationship so yeah that's the other point of concern so we tagged the yield curve inversion point and um, it's kind of correlating with a sell-off here in the markets um, so those are my points of concern whilst from an Elliott wave point of view looking at the Dow it looks like there's a good argument that we see a bounce here, but it needs to happen sharpish, okay? Um, so yeah, we're at very pivotal levels in the stock markets and we should find out very soon what is gonna happen. So very exciting times in the stock markets. So there are my views on the stock markets and on Bitcoin. As I say, I'll be putting out a video on oil explaining my long-term count, which was put out to my group in November and basically, instead of doing a new video explaining the count on oil, I thought it'd be a lot easier to upload that video. So that's what I'm going to do. And um, yeah, as I say, I'll stick the discount to the course if you're interested in learning how I trade. Uh, basically, everything I have learned in trading is covered in that course and the discount will be in the link below. All right, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up. All right, take care.